In this video, we will learn how to create and edit any logistics scenario template. A scenario template is a Microsoft Excel file with proper any logistics naming and formatting that you can use to share a scenario, add or edit scenario data to later import it into any logistics. To create a scenario template, we simply export a scenario to an Excel file. This scenario should contain all types of data that you are planning to edit or add. Such data will serve as a formatting example. The export parameters show that the template will, by default, contain experiment settings, initial states, and external tables. You might want to enable the toggle button to automatically open the exported template. The first thing we see is the agenda sheet, with the list of all sheets this file contains. So do not remove or rename any sheets. Also, we do not recommend adding sheets manually. The exported scenario already contains all the required data examples. However, if you are adding more than 1 million rows, you will exceed the limit of a sheet. In this case, another sheet needs to be created, which should be manually added to the agenda list right here. All right, let's see what we have got here. As expected, apart from the Any Logistics input tables, the template also contains scenario and experiment settings, project units and their conversions, icons, and lastly, the external tables. All the data formatting is quite simple and obvious. However, there are tips and tricks that you should know about. Let us have a closer look at the data organization on the example of the products table. We can see that each value occupies its own cell, and the data structure is identical to what we have in the Any Logistics table. The only difference here is the ID column, which is a unique identifier that serves as a reference to this item throughout the template. So, what can we edit here? Well, everything but the table headers, they should remain intact. Do not rename them or change their order in any sheet of this file. As for the scenario data, we may change the product's name, as for instance. Since this product is referenced by its ID, no other actions are required. We may save the file and import it right away. Renaming a product's ID, on the other hand, requires renaming all instances of this ID throughout the file. To move on, we should mention that a table may have a value defined with an expression or a more complex parameter setting that is exported into several cells to make its further editing much easier. If we open the inventory table, we will see that each value of the min-max policy parameters is stored in a separate cell. It seems obvious and easy to handle, but we still recommend editing with an exported data example to avoid formatting issues. Working with a blank scenario template might be a bit tricky. Now we are getting to the interesting part. By default, the data of a table is stored within one sheet that has the name of this table. However, you might find several sheets with data belonging to one table. Here belong two cases, the number of rows exceeding the limit of a sheet and the data defined as a list. Let's see into the latter. There are three types of lists that you can define. The first one is a plain list that we create in the groups, period groups, and product groups tables. As you can see, we have two groups here, customers and factories. The IDs of the groups correspond to the group's names. The content of these groups is stored in the group's customers and group's sites sheets, respectively. The same goes for the list with values defined in the BOM table. Here we can see that the components data is missing. It can be found by the ID of the required BOM in the BOM components sheet. Here it is. Another example of this list would be the historic demand data formatting. Instantly we see that IDs have different formatting. The next thing is the name of the demand type, which is in camel case. And again, the parameters of the required demand can be found in the historic demand sheet by its ID. Also note the date. It is region dependent so an example of the required data format is a nice thing to have. Finally, there is the drop-down list with multiple selection that we use when defining destinations for the shipping policy, as for instance. They are stored in the Shipping Destinations sheet. 
These are the basic data organization principles you should know about. Now there is a couple of handy tricks you can use when working with a massive supply chain scenario. The first one is comments. You are free to leave numerous comments of unlimited length in any input table sheet, right here after the last column. These comments are not processed during import and are available in this file only. And the second trick is the Excel functions and formulas. This allows you to keep all the necessary calculations in the Excel file. Any logistics will do the math to fill the scenario with the required values. To process them during import, enable the Scenario Contains Formulas option in the Advanced section of the Import dialog. And of course, the import time might depend on the number of formulas your scenario contains. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Click like if you like this video and subscribe.